head coach from UMass Lowell, and what a turnaround he's had this season with his program. At midcourt, ready to toss it up is Max Brooks and Joseph Fatbalau. This one is up, and we are underway from Kingston. UMass Lowell wins the toss, or wins the tip, rather, and they'll get it first. As we've talked about, Zach, I mean, 11-1 on the season, 6-0 at home, and 5-1 and on the road. I mean, it's going to be a tough matchup, as we've mentioned, for the Rams. Well, right away, Brooks tried looking inside on a nice feed opportunity, but a little offline there with Everett Hammond, and the Rams will take advantage of an early turnover. And, Cam, that's something that this team does very often for an 11-1 and team, or at least often enough, is turning the ball over. We'll see if it's a major factor here today. Leggett finds Freeman. Gets it up ahead to Sam. Sam one and one on one on one under the basket with Koulibaly spinning in the paint. Gets the shot up, but nothing going. Empty on the first possession are the Rams. Hakeem. Get it back. A lot of ball movement early for the River Hawks. The screen set. Feed up ahead to Koulibaly. 10 seconds to shoot. Brooks in the lane. Tried to lay it in, didn't get the bounce. A fight now under the basket. I'll go out of bounds and it'll be Ram basketball. Good physical play there by Abdu Sam. And despite that layup almost going in, Zach, I mean, you gotta love the intensity the Rams bring right off the first minute out of the gate. Just that in defensive intensity is what they're gonna have to continue. I mean, I know the only first minute of the first half has been shaved off the clock, but that's the great way to set the tempo early. Rebounding is one of this team's many strengths, so the Rams under the boards looking to do their job today. Here's Freeman, head of steam to the basket. That shot doesn't go. Trying to get the save and keeping possession for the Rams. Another big play by Abdu Sam. And we saw it on that last possession. He had that hook shot. Didn't go his way, but I mean, it's been his go-to move. He's got great uh, patience in the paint and great footwork as well. Here's Leggett with some space, but quickly swallowed up. Sam thought about taking it. Here comes Freeman again. Freeman just tosses that one up and got the bounce, but not the call. Offensive foul on the Rams. Still no points yet in this one. I wouldn't say it was a force by Freeman, but again, could have kept like one more dribble to get right to the basket where he gets. I mean, that's his bread and butter right there, getting to the basket, as we said, creating the contact to get to the charity stripe. Team one-on-one -on -one with Freeman. Two Atlantic 10 transfers going on at it. Blunt sidestep three off the back iron. And once again, the Rams had a lot of bodies there, but foul going against Rody that time. It's a beautiful shot there from Blunt. Beautiful pump fake to get Malik Martin off his feet. And as you said, the sidestep tees up the three. Couldn't get it to go, but nonetheless, he's a 41% three-point shooter from beyond the arc this season. We're probably going to see him take a couple more of those in this match. Archie Miller. Trying to get some kind of clarification from the roadie bench. And the official making the signal to the scorer's table. Looks like they're going to change the call here. That was a UMass Lowell foul. Interesting decision there by the officials. Still scoreless. I mean, been very physical in the first two minutes. Your officials today, Jamie Lucky, Tony Henderson, and Greg Evans. Sam. Passes that one off to Leggett. Leggett, leading scorer in the last game in his first career double-double as well, 16 points and 10 rebounds. Martin gets it to Bilal. Thought about handing it, keeps it seven to shoot. Bilal in the paint, spinning around and eventually getting a shot off with the left hand. And the Rams' second chance on offense. This isn't something that UMass Lowell gives up a whole lot. Leggett in the lane, fade away, and he missed it. Not a bad offensive possession to start, and Martin trying to reset it there after that offensive rebound, but a tough shot there from Leggett, couldn't get it to go. Brooks came up a little slow, limping down the court, but he's now back in the picture and a travel. That time, Hakeem a little too eager with it, took an extra step, and that's another turnover for the Riverhawks. We said it, Zach, it is early, but I mean, Rody defense is kind of shaking up UMass Lowell's offense to start, definitely the pace that we're going to want to continue. They've certainly shown up to play on the defensive end, but we're nearly three minutes into this game and there's no points. We've got a low scoring one perhaps in, sco in store today. Freeman 
to the basket with the right hand. And again, no good, but the volume is there for Freeman. He just hasn't hit any yet. Right, perfectly said. Two great takes, just couldn't get him to fall. Hammond under the basket, guarded tightly by two defenders, somehow in the corner for three. That's good. That outlet pass to Blunt, a beauty from Hammond, double teamed at the baseline. And there are your first points of the ball game. Like we said, it's act. Taking the first two threes of the game is Allen Blunt. And again, as we said, a 41% three-point shooter gets the second to fall. Well, we talked about the size this team has inside. How about their shooting? From three-point range, they're very good. 39% from beyond the arc, opposed to their opponent in 28%. We're going to see if the Rams can capitalize from beyond the arc. Trying to kick that one back out was Abdul Sam, and he's picked off. Here comes Hammond to the basket, contact, and he gets the foul that time. Rams trying to catch up there with the disadvantage, and that'll bring... Hammond to the free throw line. Hamden, their leading score on the season with 13 points a game. We'll take a look at Allen Blunt's three in the corner again. How did he fit that in there? Looks like he almost got that one around the baseline. Great play by Hammond on the assist, and now a chance to get on the scoreboard. Everett Hammond, the USC Upstate transfer. His first shot is no good. A good free throw shooter as well, just over 79%, but unable to hit his first as First changes into the game for both teams. And there is Jalen Carey for the Rams. Very excited to see what Carey can do. I mean, tremendous play, as we said, during the pregame. In his first game back from injury, 12 points, six rebounds, and five assists. Cam Morris is also in for UMass Lowell as Everett goes one of two. UMass Lowell has the first four points of this game. The Rams hope to get on the scoreboard on this possession. Will Jalen Carey give them a spark? Martin finds Blau. Tries to find a lane, fires it back outside. Freeman tries to shake him and he can't do it. That's blocked. Great play there by Brooks. Hakeem tried to go to the corner, but no one was there. And that'll bring us to our first media timeout. Been a solid defensive game, but UMass Lowell has all the points so far and 4-0. Four, four minutes into the game. bounce back for the Rams. Head coach Archie Miller telling us that this UMass Lowell team is a well-balanced, great system team, but Miller referred to it as an opportunity rather than a concern, and his players agreed with Leggett saying he's ready and excited to play. Back to you. Thank you, Paige. Great stuff there, and you know, when you're a team like the Rams this year, kind of a rebuilding year, playing kind of a juggernaut in the America East in UMass Lowell, really nothing to lose. Got to play well, and so far on defense, they've done just that. All right, trying to pick up the pace as they had it in their last win against Army as Sebastian Thomas checks in. Hit two clutch threes from the corner to boost the offensive momentum for the Rams. Going to see if he can continue that shooting performance as he's been in a slump to start the season. Alex Chiku's also, and he was looking for it in the lane, and that's going to be an offensive turnover. Last touch by Jalen Carey. Chiku as well, tied in blocks on the team. Some changes for the River Hawks. Brooks will take a seat in for the first time Yuri Covington has came off the bench in all 12 games at averaging nearly 10 points very productive one of the few true guards on this team the William and Mary transfer here's Hammond one on one with Thomas and there is Covington getting his first touch now into the corner for Hammond who had the assist to the corner earlier Covington with nine to shoot Covington feeds to the corner and four to shoot. There's Mincy into the game for the first time. He takes the jumper and that one hit off the rim. Ball still loose and nearly went out of bounds, but saved by Thomas Leggett has his hands on it and that's gonna be a jump ball. And we talked about it in the Army game, Zach. I mean, just wasting that 24 second shot clock is gonna have to be what the Rams need to continue to do. And on the defensive possession, just you see all the Rams diving on the ground for loose balls, really communicating well. And again, towards the end of the Brown loss uh, last week, was miscommunicating it on that last three from Kimo Ferrari as we saw Malik Martin had his back turned to him. But that defensive communication is gonna have to be continued here as the game continues. You saw that shot was from Quincy, or Quentin Mincy rather, who checked in a Mount St. Mary's transfer. Another change in the game for the Riverhawks. Thomas has it on offense this time, nearly pushed out of bounds. 
try to bounce it back to keep it in. It said Covington has it quickly into the lane, and they're going to say no shot, foul on the floor, much to the dismay of Pat Duquette and the UMass Lowell bench, but the River Hawks will maintain possession. Could have been almost called for a travel call too, Zach. I mean, I know he had a, the gather step there as Covington drew the contact on Carey, but Rams bench not happy with that one. Firing it into the corner. Once again, this time Covington 4-3, and he drills it. Well, UMass Lowell is doing what they're doing from three-point range. Two of three to begin this one. And they've got the first seven on the board. Again, as you said, the Rams still scoreless, still searching for their first bucket. Both of the River Hawks makes are from deep in this game. No two-point baskets for them yet. Here's Carey, step back, swish. Jalen Carey puts the Rams on the board. His second game back, the first to score off the bench. We said it too, he's probably going to spark the offense a little bit, coming, having a huge presence in the last game against Army. Does Here's it there the, in the setback. Scram for the ball in front of the roadie bench, another jump ball, and this time possession will go to UMass Lowell. Well, you talked about it, Rams looking for that spark in Carey, and he said when he wasn't out there during those five, he missed six games total, but five in a row. He said it hurt to not be out there in those big moments late in games when they could have used him. Providence being a big game as well, he missed Missed most of the Cayman Island Classic, and now he's back in a big way. And a lot of their losses, Zach, were really close contests. He could have been the deciding factor in a lot of those matches. No doubt about it. With five to shoot. Here's Kula Bali, the fadeaway. That one off the front of the rim, but a second chance rebound. Morris, short jumper. That's no good, and the Rams ultimately come away with it. Good defensive stand, and now in transition. Martin from three. Off the back iron. But skying up to get it is Leggett. Leggett throws it up with the right hand. Ishmael Leggett gets another two, and suddenly this is a three-point game. Flexing on him as he should. I mean, as a guard, he just gets that airtime and grabs those rebounds right out of the air and goes up for the second chance point. Great IQ play there from Leggett. Covington lost the dribble, but he picked it back up. Back over to Mincy. Mincy trying to spin out Leggett, and he lost it on the way up. Another good stop by the Rams, and once again in transition, but unable to connect with Malik Martin this time. Trying to get it to the same spot, and he would have had uh, space to take a shot as well. Definitely. We saw him on the last possession as well. He was wide open, just couldn't get it to fall. We'll take a look at Leggett's rebound right here. Just gets the airtime again as a guard. Just the intensity and the hustle he brings on both ends of the floor, as we saw in the last steal, too. Just an unfortunate turnover there from Carey, but a little fixing up to do. Only a three-point game still early in the match. Everett Hammond comes in to spell Yuri Covington. And we did talk about, you know, Carey bringing that spark, but really game in and game out, it's been Leggett that's led this offense. Not only the offense, the defense too. I mean, he just brings it on both ends. It's truly incredible. Here's Hammond. Fires up ahead for Kula Bali. Former St. Bonaventure product. He tosses that one up off the glass and in. And UMass Lowell breaks their little drought that they were in. That's a tough hook there. Bilal, a great contest, but gets the teardrop to fall. Bilal finds Thomas. Thomas into the paint. Gets it out to his left for Bilal, and he's able to finish. Joseph at Bilal keeps it a three-point game. Let's talk about Thomas, too. A beautiful nose for the ball. A great dish there to Bilal. Again, leading the team in assists for the Rams so far this season. Hammond feet inside and offline that time for Cam Morris. And we've got another timeout on the floor. Some points now for Rody. There's a bucket for UMass Lowell. They Again, the outside game from beyond the arc and those shots not generated in the paint has, has been their struggle. Definitely a focal point they're going to have to continue to improve on, but I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They're just going to have to continue that offensive momentum. About six early turnovers from the River Hawks. Rams haven't been able to capitalize yet, though. And this one is, they have all six points off turnovers. That's a number to keep an eye on throughout the game. And knock on wood, no turnovers for the Rams just yet. For the Rams, Brandon Weston checks in for the first time. Martin looks around, finds Jalen Carey. Gets the screen. Carey, 
trying to get towards the bucket, make some separation. There's a whistle against the Riverhawks. And we'll go against Hammond. You see it after the foul. I mean, Jalen Carey, a lot of his go-to moves we saw in the Army game has been that little quick step around shot, almost similar to Kobe. He gets it to go in a lot of opportunities, but again, the patience is going to have to be there for him to control this offensive momentum. Freeman still looking for his first points. He's 0-3 so far. Fires that high for Bolau, and he was unable to corral it in. Here comes Akeem. He was looking for Koulibaly, and that one was too far out ahead. Again, some of these passes just a little off here in this one between both teams. Yeah, both teams, I mean, again, nonetheless, UMass Lowell still leading in the turnover category, but it seems like the miscommunication is more on their end offensively. Rams moving the ball quickly. Weston gets his first touch. Brandon Weston just four minutes in the last game, the win over Army back on Saturday. Getting some early minutes in this one. Freeman spinning around in the lane, kicks out Bilal for three, no. Bilal took a few games for him to make some threes. He had two big ones against Providence a couple weeks ago. Quick. Feed up ahead for Brooks, who slams it down. Max Brooks increases this Lowell lead to five. We saw it in the pregame. He's got that bounce. He's definitely capable of making those tough baskets. How about carry between defenders? He's fouled on the way up. Going back to Brooks for the Riverhawks, a preseason All-America East selection. The Riverhawks pick to finish third, and there's another look at his dunk. Martin getting a little lost on that backdoor cut from the left wing. Again, miscommunication. He's definitely going to have to continue to be worked on, as we mentioned, Zach, for the Rams on both ends of the floor as Carey now will go to the line. Jalen Carey comes into the game. Not a whole lot of free throws, but he's made virtually all the ones he's had going up four or five going in, and now making five of six. As Abdu Sam makes a reappearance in this game, and so will Ish Leggett coming up shortly. Carey's second shot is up and through. Two of two on the trip. Goes Jalen Carey, the Syracuse transfer out of Harlem, New York. And here comes Leggett back into the game. The Rams collectively from the line, 72% so far before this match. And again, Brayon Freeman, and we just saw in Jalen Carey, they're, they're really the leaders in creating the contact and getting to the basket An to get those points. Another quick pass out ahead for him. At that time, Cam Morris capitalizes, and he'll get a try at the line. UMass Lowell is really attacking the Rams' defense with these quick passes up ahead of the back seat, and it's been paying off. Hammond has been dishing out these assists so far for the Riverhawks. He has three. Three of the four total for UMass Lowell, and he'll sink the three free throw, an old-fashioned three-point play for Cam Morris, the third off the bench. Only 57% from the field, but a 77% field goal shooter, averaging about six points a game for the 6'8 sophomore. Here's Freeman between defenders, didn't get a lucky bounce, but gets his own rebound off the deflection. In active hands for the Rams, active under the boards. They've got a few second chances today. Freeman 0 for 5, but still shows that intensity and aggression as he goes to the basket. Weston thought about taking the jumper from the baseline. Said Bilal has it, two to shoot. Bilal spins around in the lane, gets the jumper to go. Joseph Fat Bilal with time ticking away on the shot clock. Able to find some space and sink the shot. As you mentioned, Zach, he is a shooter. I mean, with his height and his wingspan, you don't really see that from a lot of big guys, but Bilal gets it done. Riverhawk lead is by four, and they lose it out of bounds. Another UMass Lowell turnover. We'll take another look at the shot from Joseph Fat Bilal. Morris just got lost on defense there. And no one's there to take the inbound for the Rams. Eventually, Chiku comes back over to it. So Morris made that great play on offense, got the three-point play, and then on defense, just sacrificed that bucket to Bull out. Here come the Rams on offense. Eight UMass little turnovers, but no points off these takeaways yet for the Rams. Chiku back to Freeman. Freeman from downtown, yes. Brayon Freeman gets his first points 
on the board. And suddenly it's a one point ball game. You gotta love the confidence from Freeman. As we said, only 0 or 4 before that last shot. That's his first field goal made. One of five here tonight, his first buckets of the evening. But again, the confidence there is just is tremendous from number two. Akeem, the former LaSalle Explorer, looks back to his right. There's Brooks. In and out, no good. Here comes another second chance, though, firing it to the corner. That time, Blunt found Hammond, and here comes Freeman the other way, threw it up. No second chance for Leggett, and he gets the whistle. Leggett, he's been over all of those second chance opportunities, grabbing rebounds, loose balls. We'll take a look back at Brayon Freeman's first bucket of the evening over there on the right side, creating space for himself. The beautiful screen from Chiku and gets the three to fall. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Freeman. Well, it's Itch Leggett at the line for two. He's got two points and now he's got three. Not too shabby of a free throw shooter. In fact, he's the best on the team. Eight, 80 percent on the season. And, you know, when you have a good scorer that can also get it done at the line, that just gives such a great boost to your offense. Definitely. And again, as you said, an 80% free throw shooter. And again, the leading scorer on the team, just game in and game out, we see so much of a different amount of offense from Leggett, mostly coming from those second chance opportunities. Well, this game's now tied, and the Rams have scored the last six, but there's a foul on the redshirt freshman, Brandon Weston. As we have eight minutes exactly on the clock a brand new he needs to look at what was important and it allowed him to play with a clear head and after the break he said he is now able to enjoy the game back to you thank you Paige and you know that was really a game and a half Freeman said he didn't play the second half of the Texas State game but not only getting it done on offense as Paige mentioned but defensively he's really become a complete player here after the turnaround definitely and not only on defense but he's just creating those opportunities for his teammates offensively in the last six games for the Rams. The long lob pass into Blunt and somehow in the corner driving and getting the bucket is Akeem. Well, an interesting play drawn up by UMass Lowell, but they get points. 16-14 now the score here in Kingston. Leggett from three in and out. Fighting four, but this time UMass Lowell gets the rebound. So far in this game, five second chance points all scored by the Rams. And the Riverhawks snapped a two-minute scoring drought on their last possession. In the lane, kicking out. Covington, three, no. This time they get a second chance rebound. Great job by Koulibaly. And as we said, UMass Lowell, eighth in the country in rebounds. Definitely don't want to give up on those second chance opportunities. Akeem in the paint, feeds to Koulibaly. Try to lay it in with the left hand. Still bouncing around, and the Rams come away with it again. Abdu Sam. Been active on the boards today. In the corner, Weston back up top. Weston gets it back on the handoff. Trying to find some space. Gets the ball into the hands of Brayon Freeman. Freeman, fade away, off the rim. Struggling to start offensively is Freeman, but again, we talked about the confidence that he has. He's not afraid to still take those shots and still try to draw contact and stick to his game. Freeman has that big three-pointer, but is one of six to start this game. Blunt made his way towards the basket, but before that, a foul call on Brandon Weston. Well, that's some quick fouls on Weston. Make it two. And he'll now head to the bench. Martin and Jalen Carey back in for the Rams. Definitely trying to spark some more offensive momentum. I mean, definitely not the start that UMass Lowell was expecting. Again, coming into this one, they've really been able to piece together a full game in their most recent matches and just crushing teams game in and game out, but the Rams sticking in this one. Close one so far, and it's been a good one. Feed inside from Morris to Blunt. It's rejected. Now Leggett, head of steam, kicks back outside. Three from Bilal. A little too strong. Well, the crowd would have went nuts if Bilal could have knocked that one down. Now looking upside quickly. Looked like... UMass Lowell didn't have it for the moment. They were able to get their hands on it for a second, but at the end of the day, another Riverhawk turnover, make it number nine. Here's Jalen Carey on the defensive end getting it done. He's only standing at 6'3", elevates to get that block pinned off the backboard for Carey. 
Leg it, that one rejected by Morris. Will go out of bounds and stay roadie ball. And Morris giving it right back to the roadie offense. Jalen Carey, though, as you mentioned, 6'3", 186, and he uses all of it when he's on the court. He plays big. Thomas finds Carey, and he lost the dribble. Here's a turnover for the Rams, as both teams have now missed their last four shots. Rams seven turnovers so far, opposed to nine for the Riverhawks, but again, if you're Carey, you definitely want to try to tie up this ball game on that possession, but still about five and a half left to go in this first. Koulibaly gets the short toss out to Hakeem. The two former Atlantic 10 transfers under the basket, trying to lay it back up. No good as Hakeem. Thomas picks it up. Thomas quickly on the other end. Picks the leg it, leg it in the paint, fires it in for Bilal, and he's fouled. Shot doesn't go, but he'll go to the line for two. Exactly. Watch that play develop coming from the rebound from Thomas, dribbling through traffic, able to find Leggett and a great wraparound pass to get to Bilal. And again, this team just does a really great job of just drawing the contact to get to the charity stripe, as we said. One of the, uh, the better parts in their offense is from the free throw line, shooting 72%. And again, that tremendous pass there from Leggett to get Bilal the easy opportunity to the line. Just seven games for the Rams after returning from shoulder surgery. Leads the team with over six boards. He does miss his first there. And just over seven points, not too shabby. We said it, Zag. Not really the start that UMass Lowell was expecting. I mean, they're still, they still are leading Rody by two, but again, they've been crushing opponents in the first half of a lot of their matches most recently. Blau goes one of two, and it's a one-point ball game. 16 to 15. Low-scoring one. Lots of defense early on. Blunt looks ahead. Morris back to Hakeem, who's quiet in this one. Just two points, but he'll take the three. Bounces high in the air, and Leggett will fall on top of it. Trying to fight with it, and possession will go to the Rams. When we talk about IQ, Zach, I mean, that is a tremendous IQ play there from Leggett. Nonetheless, diving on the ground for a loose ball, but able to stay up and not cause the travel and give the Rams the offensive possession. Oh, and asked about Ish Leggett, head coach Archie Miller, said that, you know, when you see the stat sheet, Leggett stands out every time on in the points column. You've seen his defense in this game. He says he's the same guy every day in practice that he is in all these games. That speaks to just a testament to his work ethic and him kind of emerging as a leader for this roadie team. Thomas from three. That one bounced out, and Morris came in with the rebound. He was fouled. Thomas was hot in the corner last time against Army. Tried to kind of recapture that. A solid shot, just wasn't able to hit it. Rams, only two of the last ten shots made from the field. And again, the last six for UMass Lowell. O of six for them, one of nine in their last few attempts. Just struggling offensively to make a field goal, but a lot of these points generated in the last few minutes of this first half have been from the charity stripe, Zach. Mass Lowell themselves hasn't scored in the last three minutes. Team looking to change that, spinning into the lane, jumper, too short. Freeman in transition finds Thomas who floats it up. No good, but Martin, second chance, he gets it to go. And one for Malik Martin. What do we say, Zach? Those second chance opportunities are what they're going to have to capitalize on. Thomas, a beautiful floater in the lane. We'll take a look at it again. Martin, Martin box out both of those guys and gets it to go. Just stole that one from the Riverhawks. And he'll have a choice, chance at a three-point play as the Rams retake the lead. Malik Martin. 52.5% from the line. A Charlotte transfer from Staten Island, New York, sinks the free throw, a three-point play for the Rams, and now they're up two. Again, this Riverhawk team, 11-1, their best start since becoming a Division I team when Pat Duquette took over a nine-game winning streak. The longest since 2008. Hakeem, 10 on the shot clock, looks around for Morris. Morris under the basket, and a nice easy layup goes. K 
can. Morris off the bench, solid presence. He leads the River Hawks with five points. Yeah, patience is key, and I mean, he does a great job of keeping that pivot foot to get Martin off the floor for the easy two. Bilal spins around, pushes it up with a right hand on the floater. And there's a foul at the end from Martin. The crowd does not like that one. Well, the Rams have taken the lead in this one. No, it's tied up at 18. We got a good one here in the first half. 23 for the Rams. And now Sam will go to the line. And both teams in the bonus. So now free throws on the other end. A chance perhaps for each team to maybe had their point total here as the half heads towards a close. There's Pat Duquette, again, 10th year leading this Riverhawk program and certainly coach of the year candidate for the America East, the job he's done so far. Definitely, you said the largest win streak in the program's history after converting to the Division I level. Nine game win streak for the Riverhawks so far and standing at 11 and one right now. Brooks, back to Covington who's in the game, baseline drive. Gets out of cool Bali, no roll for him there. Out of bounds and last one off the River Hawks. And Brooks can't believe it. And cool Bali, I mean, had the mismatch on Thomas. Couldn't get the layup to fall, but he had Mincy wide open in the corner. I will say off the naked eye, it did look like it was off Freeman, but the officials say otherwise, and the Rams will get possession. Here's Freeman on the other end, floats it up off the iron, and UMass Lowell gets a stop. Make it one of the Rams' last 10 now that have gone. There's a nice deflection away by Martin off the bounce. Second chance, though, will fall for Brooks. Max Brooks up to five points. It's a tough shot from Brooks, double teamed. Good contest in the paint from the Rams. Takes the lead now by one for the Riverhawks. And bad news for the Rams, Joseph Apolau heads the tunnel as Carey takes the three from the corner, comes up short. Bilal right now on the bike. Trying to work out that ankle, but what a step back there from Carey. Now in the corner was Mincy, and that's an offensive foul on the Riverhawks. And now mark their 10th turnover. So the Rams down one, 2.33 to go in the first half. And they're right there with this UMass Lowell team who have only lost this year to Rutgers on the road. Thomas, reverse pass to Carey on the near side. Carey between two defenders, kicks back out. A little short, Freeman try to run to it. And now one-on-one -on -one of the basket, Collins. And good smart play there by Thomas. Really no choice but the foul. Right, Zach, perfect way to say it. Doesn't want to get that transition bucket off early. A good foul and good hustle there from Martin to try to come back and transition, maybe to stop the play. But just a miscommunication there from Carey on offense as Martin was cut into the basket. Another turnover for the Rams. And when you're already in the bonus, not a whole lot to lose there. As with the absence of Balao now on the bike, Alex Chiku will see some extended run over the final two minutes of the half. This but half has flown by. I mean, it's been a really defensive battle throughout, Zach. Here's Covington for his first free throw, and it's good on the one and one. So Yuri Covington again off the bench. He's perhaps the Riverhawks' best free throw shooter at just over 84.5%. He sinks both. So UMass Lowell extends back to a three-point lead. Covington also at five points for the Riverhawks. They have spread the ball around on the points they've scored today. Freeman looks to the corner. Martin. Martin to his right. That's Freeman. Freeman looking for space, eight to shoot. Thomas with six on the shot clock for three. No good, Martin skies up to get it. Fresh shot clock for the Rams. Don't hate that shot from Thomas, you gotta love the confidence. Sam to the bucket, that's rejected. Koulibaly was there, but the Rams once again get another shot. Seven seconds to shoot. Freeman spinning around on the baseline, still in the air. Two seconds to shoot, and no time to get a shot off. UMass Lowell keeps the Rams off the board for 30 seconds. The Rody crowd yelling at Chiku to shoot it. I mean, definitely was aware of the shot clock, just couldn't get the ball upright in time. And again, we take a look at Freeman, only one of nine from the field. And coming up at the half, Page sits down with 
Rody Hype Man JV, who you can see right there with a nice Christmas hat. And then, of course, highlights and stats coming up at the half here on your view. The Rams, though, in this game from offense, they have really cooled it down. One of 14, of their last 14, rather. UMass Lowell, two of their last 12, 11, now make it two of their last 12, but they get an offensive rebound. Wide open for three is Mincy, and he sinks it. Mincy, 55% from beyond the arc. It's one of his first baskets to go. Well, if there's anyone you don't want to leave open, it's him, and the Rams paid for it. The lead is now six for the Riverhawks. That's their largest of the game, but the Rams respond right back with a bucket. There's Sebastian Thomas with his first points. Thomas going back to his original offensive game. Nice teardrop there in the lane, as you said, to get his first buckets. 36 seconds to go. That's rejected by Chiku. The Rams come up with another stop. Seconds or so difference between the shot clock and the game clock, and the roadie offense will slow it down. Hakeem had to do a better job there of recognizing the defense. Got both defenders off their feet, but Chiku there to secure the block. Carey. Ten seconds now for the Rams. Sam comes up to set the screen. Four seconds for Carey. Carey, four, three, as yes, time expires, no good. So Jalen Carey tried to go big there with time waiting in the first half. And the Rams trail by four going to the locker room, but not a bad half there for the Rhode Island Rams. The, Rams the name of Archie Miller's game, and the stat shows it today. UMass Lowell's Everett Hammond is leading the Riverhawks this season with 18 points per game. Today, he only has one point in the first half. Their scoring margin this season is 20.1, only leading the Rams by four today. An average point per game is 82. Now, I'm not calling it impossible, but there are currently 56 points away from that average. Rhode Island's defense certainly coming to play today. Back to you. Well, that would be quite an impressive second half if you can get to 82 points after only scoring 26 through the first 20 minutes. But this UMass Lowell's team's good. Anything's possible, but at the same time, that Rams defense has been good throughout that first half. Definitely working it on both ends. And as we've said before, the half, I mean, both teams just battling back and forth. It's really been a defensive battle. I mean, still the Rams only down by four. Joseph Apalau, who was injured to end the first half, back in to start the second half. He inbounds it, and we are underway in half number two. Leggett takes the jumper right away and sinks it. Ishmael Leggett gets the second half to a much quicker start than the first. The Rams get two on the board and bring the lead within two. One of his go-tos, too. One dribble right to the elbow. Great way to start the half, as you mentioned. Here's Hakeem on the other end. Looks up ahead for Kula Bali, who spins out the defender. Bilal, and he's down again. Timeout on the floor as Bilal is slow to his feet. And this was something that we were looking to keep an eye on. Alex Chiku is ready to check in. And I'm not sure how much more of Joseph Bilal we'll see today. Definitely going to hurt on both ends of the floor. We'll see it once again. Just gets tangled up there with the UMass in Cold Bali. But again, we saw him in the pregame or at halftime warming up. Seemed to be like limping a little bit. And again, that hit definitely didn't help there. Looks like he was grabbing his knee maybe that time, his right knee. And again, not a good sight. We'll keep our eye on it, see if he comes back in. But some extended minutes for Alex Chiku now as he is nearly able to sky up and get the dunk instead. Tries the layup, no good. Gets his own rebound and finds Martin with space, but it's rejected by Brooks. Max Brooks there on both ends of the floor for the Riverhawks. Looked like Martin had an easy two instead. On the other end for three, that's Everett Hammond. And after a quick response by the Rams, the Riverhawks lead by seven, their largest of the day. And that's an early timeout called by Archie Miller. Big three for the Riverhawks. The Ra we'll go to a break. Seven point lead for UMass Lowell. Back in Kingston, Riverhawks up seven, their largest of the day, and we'll see how they got that to go. Big block there by Brooks, and they were able to finish it off on the other end. 
Wide open on that far side, a three from Everett Hammond. Riverhawks lead back up 31-24 after just a four point lead at the half. Carry into the game to try once again to bring in a spark. Sam kicks back out to Leggett. Leggett now works under the basket. They'll fire it back out to Freeman. Leggett, step back three, yes. Ishmael Leggett again responds for the Rams and it's back to four. Such a smooth offensive game Leggett has. I mean, looks down his defender. Easy step back for the three, trying to spark some offensive momentum for the Rams. Again, Chico on that last play, should have had that easy layup. Probably wouldn't transition to that three, but nonetheless, Leggett responds. Leggett leads all scorers with eight points. He's made three of his six attempts from the field. Blunt in for Brooks. Now to the basket. Fade away from Koulibaly is good. Back and forth we go now in the second half after a very defensive first half. Leggett finds Freeman. Just a little side bounce pass to Sam. Sam thought about the shot and now takes it, but it's offline. Do Sam is 0 of 3. Both his points came off free throws. And Sam, we've seen him make some of those shots throughout the course of the season. Not a bad look from Sam, but just couldn't get it to go. Still struggling, as you said, 0 of 3 from the field. Koulibaly again under the basket. He gets the layup to go. Koulibaly in the first half, a little bit quiet. Just two points, but four in the last two possessions for the Riverhawks. Former St. Bonaventure, Bonnie now Leggett looks inside for Sam. Not on the same page, and that will be a roadie turnover. Both teams now at 10. Driving to the basket, Hakeem feeds to Koulibaly. Not, no roll that time, but Brooks the put away. Max Brooks active on the boards. There's a big two for the Riverhawks. They lead now by 10. We saw Brooks again throughout the match and again in the pregame, just the bounce that he has and the elevation that he can bring to his game. Again, in, this, in a equally matchup with Sam, but just takes it to his advantage with the easy dunk. Freeman gets it to Leggett, who hands to Carey. Jalen Carey, just four points. Trying to go it right to the rim. No good. Rams now forcing it offensively. Akeem spinning around, but his layup is short. Big stop for the Rams, down 10. Pushing pace, Leggett. It's the deck hard, and there's a foul on Koulibaly. Koulibaly looking for the jump. We'll take a look back at the putback from UMass Lowell on the other end. Beautiful entry pass there to Koulibaly. Misses the layup, and again, a huge dunk from Brooks, as we were saying. I mean, not a mismatch on Sam, but just elevates nonetheless. The Riverhawks have scored the last six. Can the Rams change that? They themselves haven't scored in nearly two and a half minutes. Under the basket, Freeman... The last second kicks it out. The Rams reset. Freeman has it once again with 10 on the shot clock. All the way back towards midcourt. Carey with four seconds. Fade away, yes. Jalen Carey, a big two, and the lead is back to single digits. What an acrobatic move there from Carey. We saw it in the first half, too. His go-to really has been that spin-around jumper. Gets it to go in the last few seconds. Again, still trying to spark something offensively. Swing out front to Koulibaly, and again he finds the basket. Well, you, we know what the Riverhawks' plan at the half was. Get it to number 13. There's eight points in the second half early on for number 13. And the Riverhawks chirping back and forth with the Rams we saw there in Brooks looking over at Freeman. Koulibaly now 10 points and six rebounds with 15 minutes to go, and there's a takeaway. Quickly the other way is Brooks, and he is able to finish. Going coast to coast, Max Brooks. He's at nine points. The steal and the bucket. Freeman on the other end for three, the response. Brayon Freeman wakes up in the second half. His first point since the break. Two of ten from the field, but two of two from beyond the arc for Freeman. That's really been his only source of offense. Akeem rolls out. Rams get the stop. Again, nine points is the lead for UMass Lowell. Sam sets the screen for Carey. Back out to Martin, able to hold on to it. Deflected out of bounds, it's Rams basketball. And we have reached 
the timeout here in the second half. Nine point lead for the Riverhawks. Big steal in the finish for Max Brooks. Well, it's been a big second half offensively for the Riverhawks, but the Rams have held with it. Nine point lead for UMass, a little 41 to 32, and really it's been the Max Brooks and Koulibaly show so far the first five and a half minutes of the second half. And we saw before the break that last bucket from Max Brooks off the steal from himself, the turnover for the Riverhawks. 15 points off of turnovers for UMass Lowell here tonight. I mean, that's definitely been the key to their offense. And again, 24 paint, uh, point, paints in the point for them as a whole. Here's Freeman who tees up a three. That one levels home. Maybe not the prettiest shot, but Brown Freeman getting it done. He's at nine points all on made threes. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, not his go-to offensively, but it's been working here tonight. Both teams with four makes from distance. For the Rams, a positive for UMass Lowell, not their highest production. Hakeem tried to laser it in there for Hammond cutting across out of bounds. Good heads up play there from Carey to get his hands in there at the last second. A good pass from Hakeem to Haman, but again, Carey gets there. Koulibaly would have had a chance on the shot. He lost it, but there's some contact in there. Look at this three, just found some space, took it, got it. Well, when you talk about Brayon Freeman and a lot of the players between these two teams, Ishmael Leggett out of Maryland, a couple UMass Lowell stars from that DMV area, including this guy right here, Max Brooks, once again to the basket. Freeman now on the other end. A lot of Freeman's looks from beyond the arc have been because of Chiku giving him that screen to create the space for the open shot. Freeman bounced to carry. He'll take the three. No, too short. Brooks with the rebound. Riverhawks in transition, but now resetting. Well, when asked this week, how do you guard you know, all the changing personnel on this UMass Lowell team, a transfer-heavy team? Freeman said, you know, already familiar with a lot of these players being from that you know, Maryland, D.C. area. Somebody lost the shoe in the paint. Shot is up with seven seconds. No good cool. Bali with the rebound. Hakeem wide open from three. That one rolling out, but a foul going in favor of the Rams. That Alan, was Blunt who lost the shoe. Yeah, I mean, Alan Blunt, how do you recover from that? I mean, the play was still going on. I mean, had no choice whether to kind of stay in it with one shoe off, but... Rams get the stop. How about the awareness from Jalen Carey to toss that shoe out? Don't want anyone tripping on it. We already saw Joseph Apollo exit this game due to injury, and he's sitting currently on the bench with ice on his knee. It doesn't look like he'll be back in, at least not for the moment. Lead is eight for the Riverhawks. Carey bounce ahead to Freeman. All over him is Covington. Now off the foot of Covington. And a technical foul issued to Yuri Covington. He was shocked about that call. I couldn't hear what he said from here, but it must have been something. Could have either been directed towards the officials, probably more to trigger them to give him the technical, but nonetheless, Leggett will go to the line. But again, you take a look at that last play from Freeman. Him and, him and Chico have really been on the same page with that pick and roll. We'll take a look at it again, but foul there on the floor. Some freebies for the Rams, and Leggett sinks his first. And down now by eight. You know, all these shout, shots really count for the Rams. Leggett two for two on that trip. Let's take another look. Freeman tripped up by Collins. He, it's like he just said, what? Still maybe arguing his case, and here's his reaction. So an inbound now for the Rams after their free throws. Carey looked to fire it inside. Here comes Freeman now. Freeman, fade away. No good, but Martin has the rebound for the Rams. Trying to go up for it is Leggett. He hit the ground hard in an offensive foul at the end of the day for the Rams. It's the turnover. And Malik Martin, he really puts his teammates in the right state of mind offensively on those second chance opportunities. Haven't really been able to capitalize in the second, but again, he's been all over the board so far tonight with five. 
leading the charge so far. Well, UMass Lowell, their opponents are averaging just 10 and a half offensive rebounds a game. Well, in this one as Weston checks back in. The Rams have 13. They've done their job on the boards today. Now it's just a matter of finishing on those second chances. Rams 11 for the Riverhawks, 7 in that category. Back in the game is Mincy. He's guarded by Weston. Koulibaly inside, hook shot, no. Rams have put the pressure on Koulibaly. He's cooled down. Now Martin, baseline under the basket, yes. Martin finds some space, gets the layup, and the Rams are creeping back in. It's a four-point game. Turning defense into offense as Martin had the mismatch there on Koulibaly, but gets the easy contest and tremendous patience in the paint for the easy two. Martin picking up the foul, not happy with it. But that'll bring us to a timeout. How about that run by the Rams? Malik Martin capitalizing on a bucket as the four-point game here in Kingston. Two teams, but a 7-2 run for the Rams has put them back in the picture. And it's been Malik Martin leading the charge really on both ends, creating defense into offense. He's had a lot of great contests moving forward in these last few minutes and creating those opportunities into offense with the patience that he has. Mincy will inbound out of the timeout. He finds Covington, who picked up that tech not that long ago here in the second half. Hammond eventually finds Covington, but just 10 left on the shot clock. Hammond guarded tightly by Sebastian Thomas in the paint and double dribble. Costly turnover for the Riverhawks who actually have fallen behind the Rams in that category, but they just picked up their 11. They've been holding on to their longest lead of the match, but still Rams knocking at the door, trying to break it even. And now the Riverhawks scoreless in the last 2-14, but the Rams losing the dribble there. Mincy nearly losing it in the air at midcourt, and once again bounced away, but the Riverhawks stay with it. Morris gets it to Hammond to the basket, and almost fell right to his hands on the ground. Second chance. And who else? Max Brooks comes away with points. Got to love the hustle there from Chiku, but no Rams really boxing out again. No one able to really get that rebound besides Chiku. Weston over to Sebastian Thomas. Riverhawks lead is back to six. Carey with it. Gets it to Chiku back in the game. Chiku driving. And a foul call against... I believe the Riverhawks, and I believe that's against Cam Morris. The charge on Chiku. Take a look at how many chances the Riverhawks got there. It's at least three or four, and finally Brooks said enough is enough. I'll do it myself. Got two. As we said, Chiku really the only one able to try to get that rebound, but doing as most as he can now. He gets the charge, and now it's going to go in favor of the Riverhawks. So no, that's a foul on Chiku for the Rams. So down, or up six rather, the Riverhawks. Chance once again to build their lead. Morris out in front for Mincy. Covington will just take the three from there and he gets it. Covington decided that he'll just spot up, take the three. Nothing but the bottom of the net. And him and Freeman have been battling back and forth all night, definitely chirping at each other as well. Freeman on the other end, spinning around into the lane. Kick back out for Leggett. Just over 10 minutes left to play. Driving baseline, falling over Freeman. He lost it. On the other end, working quickly, Hammond. Underneath for Brooks, rejected by Chiku. The Rams have an answer for Brooks. And now on the other end, quickly, Leggett. That one's deflected by Covington. Lots of defense on these possessions, but the Rams... Keep it alive. Freeman for three. Yes. Rayon Freeman in double digits. There it is. Back to a six-point game. He's at 12 points. And perfect four of four from distance as Pat Duquette calls timeout. And we said it. Him and Cunnington really battling back and forth, chirping at each other all night. Tremendous defense there on the left side and a great block there on Leggett on the three. But... Now, finally, Freeman answering, cutting into that deficit. We'll take a look at what Brayon Freeman has done in this half. Or there's his first. 
the confidence from Freeman after, out of the locker room. Again, a slow defensive start to this game for both teams and still the confidence of the shoot, especially after a lot of those early misses, Cam. Right, Freeman yet to make a bucket inside of the arc. Four for four from beyond the three point, but I'm at four for 13 in the field. I mean, 12 points for Freeman leading the charge, but still Rams down by six. Freeman the leader for the Rams. And on the other end, it's Brooks with 13 now and six of 10 shooting. He actually has a double-double, 11 rebounds as well. So not too shabby from Max Brooks. Again, a preseason All-America East selection. Comes into the game with two double-doubles to so make it number three on the season for the Waldorf Maryland native. Again, one of those many DMV products in this game. Certainly that will help players like Leggett and Freeman on the Rams who know these players well coming from that area. And there's a two-hand slam now from Quinton Mincy. Quinton Mincy recognized the mismatch. Carey got there at the last second. That's a, that's a statement bucket right there for the Riverhawks. Freeman with 12 points, the outlet to Carey. Now Thomas fires back to Martin. Freeman again from three, no good this time. That's his first miss from three today. Four or five now as the Riverhawks up eight, half possession. Looks good, could have been five for five, but Covington trying to build a hot streak of his own, no good. Carey bounce up ahead for Sam and he lost on the way up. Thought he had a foul, but it's stolen by Freeman. Freeman in the paint, looking to kick it out. Rams able to keep it despite perhaps a no call and that time they do get it as Carey tried going up. And Freeman really started that play getting the steal after a great defensive possession there from Haman. Take a look back at the UMass dunk on the other end from Mincy. Again, recognizing the mismatch on Carey getting the easy two. Now he'll go to the line. And really he put himself in position for that by getting away from Brayon Freeman on defense. At that point, nothing really Carey can do but what he can do here is put some free throws on the board. He got one on his first trip. And we talked about the turnovers in this game, Cam, and UMass Lowell kind of started a little shaky with the ball compared to the Rams. Well, now Brody has more, but he's also, also committed four in the last two minutes or so. Right, that's crucial timing. Perfect way to segue into that. I mean, beginning of the game, you definitely don't want to start off with turnovers, but definitely not in crunch time like this. Carey trying to regain points off of him now. Second. Free throw is up and no good. So one of two on that trip goes Jalen Carey. Four of, or rather three of four on his evening. The lead is seven for the River Hawks. Blunt finds Hammond. And back to Akeem. Akeem just a quiet two points matching his jersey number today. Koulibaly hooks it with the left arm and he's back on the scoreboard. Make it 12 for Abdul Kareem Koulibaly. Koulibaly, the experienced senior, taking it to his, his advantage. Fade away for Jalen Carey. He gets that to go. Points picking up here in the second half. We're under eight minutes to go. It's going to go to all night, Zach. Seven point advantage for the Riverhawks. Firing it ahead is Mincy looking for Koulibaly and foul call there. We're heading to the timeout. Under eight minutes to go here at the Ryan Center. Riverhawks up by seven. We'll be back after this. Thank you, Paige. Jalen Carey certainly looks 100% out there. Not really limited in any way. He was earlier in the year, and he's been a difference maker so far off the bench. Right, you got to love him and, and Brayon Freeman in the front court. Just that craftiness that they bring to their offense really does spark the offense in an important way. And, you know, Freeman really not doing that great from the field, but again, from beyond the arc, it's been his game, but Carey picking it up on that end. They keep trying to find somebody, and he thought he found Mincy, but instead he found Malik Martin. There's a Rams takeaway. Nearly losing his balance is Freeman. Rams trail by seven. Carey lost it on the way to the bucket. Goes out of bounds. And the Rams will end up keeping it at the end of the day. At one point, the Riverhawks in the second half led by 12. 
And the Rams have cut it back to four a few times. It's at seven now. Big possession here as, again, we're under seven and a half to go. Crunch time is coming up, and that's all without Alex Chiku, who appears to be done for the game. Or, excuse me, uh, Joseph Apalau, who appears to be done, although he no longer has ice on that knee on the bench, so something to keep an eye on. Leggett spins back outside. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Freeman, six to shoot. The jumper comes up short. Second chance for Sam, yes. Abdu, Sam goes up, gets the bucket, and he'll have a trip to the line awaiting him. Sam, a 70% free throw shooter. We'll take a look at it one more time, sticking with it. A great box out, draws the contact there from Hamand for the easy two. Jalen Carrier will check back in. He tweaked his ankle on that last play, Zach. Definitely don't want to be without him and Bilal, but nonetheless, he'll go back in as Sam tries to convert the end one. And Cam, Abdu, Sam has been quiet today. Just one of four. That was his first made field goal. And he'll get a chance to make it five points and bring the deficit down to four, and he does. Abdu, Sam, the redshirt freshman, didn't play last year. Out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland, another DMV product. Big play for the Rams. And the crowd on their feet in the Ryan Center. Brooks has been dangerous in the second half. Passes up ahead to Koulibaly. Nearly had it stolen away by Thomas. Good stop by the Rams. Thomas with pace. Thomas looked to fire at the Chiku, batted back in his face. Hakeem was there. Back over to Thomas. Thomas to the basket. He draws contact. Hakeem was there and Koulibaly picks up the foul. And Thomas, you saw him in transition. Always has his head up, has a true nose for the ball. Don't really see him getting those calls as he wants it, but draws the contact there to go to the line. Trying to cut it to this deficit now to cut it to two. We haven't seen a ton of three-point attempts for Thomas, just two today. But after the game on Saturday as Thomas makes his first, Archie Miller emphasized, you know, we talk about Freeman's slow start shooting, but Thomas also didn't have the best start to the season from deep. And since then, has worked on his game, has become more confident, and you saw that on Saturday against Army, making a few of those from the corner. And today has been a solid presence off the bench as well for the Rams as he goes for two for two. Cut it back to a two-point game. Zach, down this last six and a half minute stretch as the Ryan Center gets up on their feet. We're gonna have to definitely key in on Alex Chiku and Kolobali down in the paint. As Kolobali has the experience, Chiku only the redshirt sophomore. Hakeem tosses it up. No good in the air. Sam brings it down. Here comes Rody, a chance to tie or take the lead. Thomas fires, it's again rejected by Akeem, but right to Ish Leggett for three, and it's no good. UMass Lowell holding on the lead for now as we hit the six minute mark left to go. Back to back times for Thomas. Could have been a turnover on both possessions, but nonetheless, he gets it back. Blunt over to Hammond. Hammond to the lane, loses it on the way up. Heads out of bounds. It'll be a foul actually on the Rams. Gets up to Sam. Yeah, tough breaks on the offense. Almost turning it over again is Thomas, but an open look for Leggett. Couldn't get it to go. Now the Riverhawks looking to add on to their lead. The Rams have scored the last seven in just over two minutes. And Riverhawks in the last two, 219 are scoreless, but they changed that there for the free throw make from Hammond, who before that was just at four points on one make. Carry out for the Rams. Hammond second is through. Second on the team in free throw percentages at 80. Going two for two there. Everett Hammond, two big makes. Back to a four point lead for the River Hawks. Leggett tried a three in the last possession. Pass it off to Thomas here. Thomas. Will float her off the glass and in. Sebastian Thomas, the acrobatic shot. Got the angle and it's back to a two point game. Uses that ball handle of his to create that space. Again, Chiku. Giving him the opportunity with a great screen. Back outside, Akeem. Akeem played in this building back in 2020. 
Now back as a River Hawk. That's a three from Blunt. No good. But Covington skies up for the rebound. Covington's second chance layup is good. Covington, just 6-1, one of the shorter players on this team. Played taller on that last possession. There's a Thomas miss and a rebound by Hammond. Thomas had a defender up in the air. Just missed the glass. Could have been cutting into the Rams' deficit, but now the Riverhawks will take it. Floating up ahead from Covington. Wide open is cool up Bali, but he missed the dunk. Now two defenders on him, and a foul eventually is called, but... That was an easy two points by Koulibaly, and he just missed. And we talked about it, Zach. I mean, Chiku, the redshirt sophomore, Koulibaly, the experienced senior, definitely, you know, lost him on that backdoor uh, cut there. We'll take a look at it one more time. Look just how much space he it. had. Freeman tried to meet him, and he still missed eventually the foul going against Chiku, I believe. Or no, Sam picks it up. So two free throws for Koulibaly, and he makes the first. And with Joseph Apalau out, I mean, the only real true source of rebounding is Chiku and Sam, and Sam really not doing that great of a job boxing out yet, losing defenders, or losing his opponents, rather. Kolobali gets that one. The Rams will go small. Sam, the big man in for the Rams, as the second free throw is good, 2-2. That time goes Kulabali. And that's something Archie Mil Miller mentioned. Jalen Carey makes the small lineup work. And he's back as there's a foul going against Covington. And the Rams, or Miller too, when asked, you know, this is a big team, will you go with a bigger lineup? He said, no, I'm not expecting certain guys to play just because they have, you know, this setup on the floor. And they've, you know, stuck with what they've gone with this year, and they're right in this game. i surprised we haven't really seen a lot of Lou Hutchinson. I mean, he had a great impact at the beginning of the season in his freshman campaign so far. In fact, Cam, we haven't seen Lou Hutchinson yet. In just three minutes in the last game, I believe that was his low on the season. But with Jalen Carey back, that will take away some of the younger guys' minutes. Weston in this game just at seven. A lot of that coming in the first half as Leggett goes for two for two. Four points is the advantage for UMass Lowell. Under four and a half left to go. Akeem, bounce ahead and kick ball, hit the foot of Thomas. And we talked about it earlier in the pregame, Zach. The only team that really gave UMass Lowell a run for their money was uh, the University of Massachusetts, the only other A-10 team that the Riverhawks have faced throughout the season. And they, they won that game by five, but the Rams giving them a run for their money. Under the basket, Koulibaly nearly had it taken by Thomas. Skying up on the far side is Hammond, 10 seconds to shoot. Koulibaly kicked out. Hammond, three, off the front of the rim, and a UMass little foul will result in the turnover. That's tough if you're on the River Hawks end. I mean, that could have really honestly went both ways. Could have either been an easy two. Again, no Rams really boxing out in order to get those opportunities, but the Rams will go to the line now to capitalize. And again, with both teams in the bonus, that will be free throws coming up for Malik Martin. Huge free throws in this last four minutes as we approach. Martin has been quiet in this game, just five points, two of five from the field. Does have a make from the charity stripe already in this game and his lone attempt. But he's been that guy that some here in Kingston have kind of tabbed to be perhaps a uh, that third option scoring. Of course, you have Leggett who leads the way for Rhodey, 17 a game. Then you've got Freeman, not all that far behind him at about 13. But we haven't, we've yet to see really that big game scoring from Leek Martin. Again, he's very quiet offensively, but, you know, gets those points where they're needed as he drills that last free throw. And the second chance opportunities, he's there almost on every possession. It's a one possession game. Archie Miller hyping up the crowd, and here we go. Hakeem gets the screen to the basket. Sam gets the stop for the moment, but it heads out of bounds. And that'll bring us to our final media timeout of the half. Just a two-point lead. It's anyone's game here in Kingston. UMass Lowell up by two. Last seven. And definitely, and the key for the River Hawks. I mean, 34 points in the paint opposed to Rhodey's 16. But again, we take a look at Malik Martin. I mean, his presence in the paint off those second chances have really been the focal point of the offense. 17 points 
on second chance opportunities opposed to 13 for the Riverhawks. Under four to go. Inbound from Akeem coming up. Couple fakes. Make it three. But he gets it right back from Koulibaly. No drive kick. Hammond to Covington. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Covington towards the basket. It's off the side of the glass. No chance on that shot. And the nearly sloppy pass there from Thomas to Carey. Could have been Rhode Island's 17th turnover, but instead they'll have a chance to tie or take the lead. Leggett driving to the basket, gets some contact, nearly got the angle on that shot, but would not fall. Still a two-point UMass Lowa lead. Definitely don't want to try to force shots. I mean, you could have took a little bit more time. I mean, still early, three minutes left to go, but Leggett trying to get the second chance opportunity after a shot. Blunt kicks out. Foul off the ball against the Rams. And that's another one on Sam. He's suddenly on four in this game. And again, without Joseph at Bilal, I mean, you don't really have much other options. Jiku currently on the bench for the Rams. Like you said though, Zach, Archie Miller does like that small lineup. There's a lot more scores in there to produce some offense, but rebounding is going to be the key in the last final minutes. Kulabali with 14, make it 15. He leads everybody. And he'll get a second there on a one and one. Out to a three point game, still one possession, but a chance to make it two. Kulabali only 55% from the line, now four of four here tonight versus the Rams. The lefty has 16 points and nine boards, double, double watch for him. But more importantly, a four point lead for the Riverhawks. 2.49 left to go. Thomas looking around. Carey now has it. Looks for Sam cutting across, instead gets it to Leggett. Sam has seven seconds to shoot. Sam driving into the paint, spinning around. Couldn't get the shot to go. It's rolling around and picked up eventually by Alan Blunt. And a lot of those shots he's taken, those little fadeaway hook shots, haven't been falling in the last few matches for the Rams. The Rams have not made a field goal in over three minutes. Brooks lost it. Thomas nearly scooped it up, but UMass Lowell keeps possession. Hammond spinning around in the paint, pushes it up and gets it to go. Strong shot by Everett Hammond. And suddenly it's a six point game. Carey had a tip on the previous play, but Everett takes it to his advantage with the easy two. Like it, thought about three, but Covington met him quickly now in the paint. High off the window and in for Ishmael Leggett, who now leads the Rams with 14 points. It's a four point game in Kingston. Timeout called by Archie Miller. We will keep it right here. Brayon Freeman looking to check in after the timeout. Trying to spark some more offense for the Rams. We'll take a look back at Ishmael Leggett. The take on Yuri Covington. High off the glass and in for the sophomore. Some numbers in this game rebounds wise. Very even still. UMass Lowell just one more than the Rams. 38 to 37. Big number though, still in this game, 16 Rams turnovers and 20 points resulting off those takeaways for UMass Lowell. The Rams just seven points off 13 UML turnovers. Right, and they said the rebound numbers. UML creeping up, finally broke the tie, has 38 opposed to 37 for the Rams, like you mentioned, and that's gonna come down to the wire with about a minute and a half left. Still the Rams with a small lineup. How about points, uh, uh, points in the paint, rather? Double. River Hawks have 36 to 18 for Rhode Island. We just saw the little stat there. Points off turnovers, 20 for the River Hawks and only seven for the Rams. River Hawks definitely capitalizing when the Rams are in disarray offensively here tonight. Akeem with a minute and a half left to go. River Hawks up by four. Hammond. Put some space, gets it to Covington. Covington, big spin around the jumper. Comes up short, 
Leggett with the rebound. Here comes Rhode Island. Bounce pass, carry in the corner. They'll try to spin around. Rams can't take up too much time, but they don't have to work too fast either. Leggett puts up a shot. Martin on the second chance, sinks it on the layup. Back to one possession, 62-60. And now we're under a minute left to go. And we said it, Zach, that's been his game in the paint, getting those second chance opportunities. I mean, all of his points have really been generated off those second chances. Hakeem has it. The crowd is on their feet in the Ryan Center. Hakeem, kick back out, and it's deflected by Carey. Carey, one-on-one -on -one in the basket with Blunt. He loses it. Hits the ground. He's fouled. Jalen Carey, what a play on defense. And he sets up the Rams to potentially tie this game. And he's shown a lot of minutes. We'll take a look at it again. Turning that defense into offense. Obviously couldn't get the shot off, but nonetheless will go to the line. And he's been prolific from the line tonight. Three of four, shooting 75% on the season so far. Before this game, only five of uh, four or five. So Carey taking that to his advantage. Solid free throw shooter, but the Rams on the season, just 27%. If you're a... Taking the foul there as that bounce just goes for the Rams and Jalen Carey. That's a smart foul if you're blunt because if you don't give up the easy basket, these free throws aren't a given for this team. But just one more is all the Rams need to make it an all new ball game with 34 and 3 tenths seconds to go. Regardless of the make, still a one possession game with 34 seconds. Carey shot is up and through. The Rams have knotted it up at 62. And a quick timeout called by Pat Duquette. What a storm back for the Rams. They've scored the last six in just a minute and 14 seconds. Four ties, four lead changes here tonight in the Ryan Center as both teams battle back and forth. The Rams in this game have not led since 3.43 left to go in the first half. Now they're on a 6-0 run in the last minute and 15 seconds. With 32 seconds left, the Riverhawks will take it offensively. And again, it's still anybody's game. The Rams definitely going to try to keep their pace, trying not to rush anything crazy because definitely want to get off a good shot if they can regain it. Well, something we haven't talked about as much in this game, came is the shooting numbers. Going to this game, UMass Lowell has shot, what, just over 51%. Right now, they're under 40 at 39, 23 makes, and 59 tries. And from three, they're at about what they normally do, but they've only made five in this game. And only the Rams, about 10% under them, 29%, 19 of 57. And from three, the same amount of makes as the Riverhawks in five. But this Rams crowd, electric in Kingston, as the Riverhawks will take offensive possession. Rams on the floor, they're five. Carey, Leggett, Thomas, Sam, and Malik Martin. Again, the Riverhawks haven't played the Rams since 2014 back then. Martin in 12 was Hassan Martin, and he led with 18. This game, maybe not as much scoring-wise, but he's had an impact. Here we go, 27 seconds left. Tie ball game at 62. Hakeem. He'll back off, we'll let the shot clock dwindle. 10 seconds to go. About four seconds difference between clocks. Hakeem drives, spins in the lane, gets the bucket. UMass Lowell takes the lead with six seconds left to go. And Archie Miller will use a timeout to advance the ball. The Rams, a chance to tie or take the lead maybe with time expiring. And Thomas on that defensive possession, didn't leave his feet, almost could have drew contact off that layup. So preventing that foul from being called, but still the bucket goes. The Riverhawks take the two-point lead. Still a one-possession game. Freeman looking to check in now after the timeout. And they're going to need him. He's been... They don't have to force a three. They could get the two to tie it up, but... I, I feel like it's anybody's ball game, but the Riverhawks still in favor as Malik Martin will inbound. Inbound for the Rams. Four seconds to go. Freeman works quick. Freeman right to the basket, his shot goes. Four tenths of a second left, 
and we'll have overtime here in Kingston. Beautifully drawn up play there from Miller. Like I said, you don't need the three-pointer on that possession. Freeman finds the gap, gets the two to go. Two defenders from the Riverhawks off their feet, and now we're tied at 64. We'll have extra time here in Kingston. And meanwhile, the Riverhawks, this is also their first overtime game this season. So some uncharted territory for both teams. So the A-10 has really been giving UMass Lowell a lot of problems throughout the whole season. Like we said, only uh, the University of Massachusetts gave them a tight ball game. They still came up victorious in that one by five, but both teams going into their first overtime match of the season. 64 apiece, five minutes added to the clock. Sam and Brooks will tip it up. It heads out of bounds and it'll go to Rody first. By the way, this is Brown Freeman's second matchup against UMass Lowell. He spoke about that yesterday during media availability in that one. That was just his fifth career game with George Washington. 13 points off the bench. He surpassed that total with the game tying bucket. And definitely favoring the three, as we mentioned. It's remarkable. Four or five from beyond the arc for Freeman. The Rams first possession in the extra period. Martin will have it in the corner. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Leggett working around Martin, straight away three, yes. There's your big score from Malik Martin. Cool, calm, and collected is Martin. Getting the roadie crowd back up on their feet. His first three made here tonight. He's in double digits. His first make from deep. 12 points for number 12, Malik Martin. To the far corner, back up to Brooks. He was quiet towards the end of that second half. He spins around in the paint and gets two more. Brooks up to 15 points. Rams trying to hopefully contain Brooks. He's been a huge presence in the paint, scoring a majority of their paint points here Brody, tonight. Brody still with the lead by one. That bucket by Martin. Brody's first lead since the first half. 67-66 as Freeman drives. Feeds to Sam and he gets two. Up to Sam, just his second bucket. It puts the Rams up by three. Beautiful find from Freeman. Again, gets the defense off their feet, creating the space for Sam. Blunt to the outside. Hammond drives, jumps, and gets it. Silences the crowd. There's Hamden. Now Hammond a chance to tie the game with the foul. That's on Abdu Sam. Now he's at four. There's a shot off the right hand. He gets it too. That was actually Leggett who picked up the foul. So that's his four. Hammond in double digits now with 10. And on this free throw makes it 11. Good thing it wasn't on Sam. Sam's in foul trouble for the Rams. I believe he's got four, as you said, or three. This one's tied up at 69 apiece. Freeman, big touch, kicks out. Back now to Carey. Under 10 to shoot. Leggett drives, and he stepped out of bounds. Costly mistake there for the Rams, who had some room, a lane to the basket there for Ish Leggett. Leggett, that's his fourth turnover of the evening. Tied up with Freeman with 14 points. Definitely letting the game come to him, of course, alongside with Malik Martin. But again, a crucial turnover as we're tied up at 69. Brooks will get a breather and Covington re-enters the game for UMass Lowell. Kulabali gets it to Akeem, who had that big bucket for UMass Lowell towards the end of regulation. He'll go to the bucket again. Gets it to go with the right hand. Hakeem, the leading assist column for the Riverhawks. UMass Lowell, their first lead of overtime, and now a foul going against Freeman to put him at the line for two. Brown Freeman is yet to shoot free throws in this game. And there on the other end, another look at Hakeem's bucket. And despite his offensive efficiency, I mean, leading the team with 46 total turnovers before this matchup. Five here tonight leading the way for the Riverhawks. 
Freeman missed his first. He, on the season, the Washington, D.C. native, over 78.5%. Again, that was his first of the game. No chance to tie now here, but bringing it back within one as Freeman makes his second. UMass Lowell still with the lead, jumping out in front. Covington. Umaslo works to the near side for Hammond. Hammond drives baseline, spins around, puts the shot up. No good. Brody can take the lead with a bucket. Carey, fade away. No good. Rolled off the rim. In transition, Hakeem, spot up jumper, yes. Another silencer. For Allende, Hakeem, the former LaSalle Explorer, he's up to eight points. In the last offensive possession, Jalen Carey couldn't get his go-to step back to go. Leggett from downtown, yes! Ishmael Leggett knots it back up at 73. A huge three for the sophomore in Leggett. Two of five from beyond the arc for number 10, now ties it up at 73. Crowd on their feet. Once again, a brand new ball game with under a minute and a half left to go. Hakeem spins, shoots, second chance, rolls out. Leggett with the rebound. And a great heads up play there from Hakeem. He got his second chance rebound, couldn't get the layup to fall, still no Rams boxing out. Brody can take the lead on this possession. Freeman. At the charity stripe, the jumper goes. Brayon Freeman puts the Rams back up by two with under 50 seconds left in overtime. Had Sam down low as well. Two good shots, either the pull up or down low for the layups. Despite that, takes the lead. Biggest defensive possession for the Rams. As we're once again tied. Akeem has gone off in this overtime. He's at 10 points. Talk about a back and forth battle, Zach. As Archie Miller will call a timeout. Both teams just at each other's necks. We're gonna head to a break. 75 apiece, 28 seconds left to go. Freeman, Sam, Carey, Martin, and Leggett. And Rody will stack, it looks like. 22 seconds on the shot clock, just over 28 on the game clock. That's about a six second difference. Here we go. Like it gets it back on the handoff and they're gonna let that clock run. Like it. Pick up the dribble. Six seconds to shoot. Leg it to the basket, it's blocked. But out of bounds, the Rams have three seconds on the shot clock and now just under nine seconds in overtime. Rams, no timeouts. UMass Lowell has two if they choose to use one. Inbound to Leggett, two to shoot. Contact, and he'll go to the line. Costly foul on the Riverhawks. That was on number two, Hakeem. And with one make, the Rams can jump out in front. I don't know about the shot selection. I mean, Leggett gets it done no matter the call. I mean, draws the contact at perfect timing as the shot clock was at one. Shot almost, you know, off the mark from our end, but. And the there's the lead for Rody. With another one coming up. UMass Lowell and Pat Duquette do have two timeouts here that they have it at their disposal after this, but they won't have a lot of time. Leggett gets the second to go. Here's the inbound. UMass Lowell will play it. Four seconds to go. Hakeem in the paint, throws it up. It's no good. And the Rams win. Brody comes back in overtime and takes this one against the UMass Lowell Riverhawks. Only gives them their second loss of the season. 
11-2 in the American East.